Its stamp on the modern world can be seen everywhere. Single words like opera and pasta, names like Da Vinci and Pavarotti and Versace. It's the home of the Pope and pizza, spaghetti and gelato. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm in Italy. When you think about Italy, I bet you think about pasta and wine and the Godfather. When I think about Italy, I think about all the same stuff, but I also think about a country that is one of the most historical and culturally diverse places on the planet, and it has a rich sporting culture. So you got hunting, food, good booze. All I have to say about that is Viva l'Italia. No matter who you are, ah, dude, that is amazing. No matter what you want your life to be, you gotta be a star. First Italian birth. Pickle Beluga. That guy has a lot of balls, a lot more balls than I do. This is a love story about guns and birds and dogs and wine and pasta and people. It's a story about a dream come true, about a well-trained dog by my side, a well-built Franke in my hands, a plethora of birds at my feet in a place I've always wanted to explore. My story begins in the ancient city of Urbino. And here I sit down for my first glass of Italian wine with my new friend, Bruno Baccaria. Bruno is the director of Franke Firearms. And based on the stereotypes that I have in my head, Bruno is everything I've ever expected from an Italian. If I'm honest, sitting here in this spot with a glass of bubbly, an ancient city, quite literally, this all speaks of Italy to me. This is one small town. Uh, we have many villages like uh, this place uh, around of, uh, of Italy. Like most of the towns in Italy, Urbino is a walled city that dates back to medieval times in the Marche region of Italy. The town sits on a sloping hillside and it's home to the University of Urbino, which was founded in 1506, and it has about 20,000 students attending. One of Urbino's most famous sons is Pope Clemente XI, who lived here from 1700 to 1721. To put it in perspective, keep in mind that our country wasn't even born yet then. The main attraction of Urbino is the Palazzo Ducale. Here you can find one of the most important collections of Renaissance paintings anywhere in the world. Everywhere you look is something historical, and it's here, in Urbino, that I get my first taste of what Italy is all about. When I look around this town, there are buildings here that are straight from the medieval times, quite literally. I mean, coming from a country that's just a few hundred years old compared to several thousand here, that's, that's it blows my mind. This is what's fascinating everybody. Coming from the States, we have an idea of what Italy is, right? And for us, it's pizza and pasta and mandolino and the mandolin exactly italians are intensely proud to be yeah. italian aren't no, they absolutely sometimes too much so <laughs> to be italian sometimes looks like a job <laughs> <laughs> in italy uh, we have uh, 20 regions i mean that um, more or less 20 states right okay and uh, each state has uh, uh, its own way to cook uh, Sure. its own way to drink, its own way to speak, right. its own way to work. And speaking of jobs, Bruno spends most of his time in a more modern part of Urbino, in the state-of-the-art factory where they make my favorite shotgun, Franke. Now, in case you didn't know, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world and one of the true joys of life are guns. Big guns, small guns, long guns, Nerf guns, water guns, machine guns, and shotguns. And especially the ones with the big orange F on it. The history of guns starts with the invention of black powder around the 10th century. And with that, the development of the cannon changed warfare forever. And then, around the 14th century, small, portable hand cannons started to show up in Italy. One of the reasons that the Italians were so skilled at gun making was because they were also great at making one of the most important ingredients in a gun. Any guesses? They were great at making quality steel.
Bruno takes me to visit the Franke headquarters. And here, he introduces me to all the Franke people. The money guy, the plant director, the decision maker guy, the marketing guy, the women who know more than most of these guys, and the guys and the girls, and the guys and the girls who are proudly the backbone behind every gun that is made here. It's crazy for me to see this because I spent so much time of my life in the duck blind with one of these and to see it now in production. For me to see this and see hundreds of them, I think is really cool. Actually, the really cool yeah. part was when they let me jump onto the assembly line, screw up some poor guy's day, uh -huh. and try to actually help build one of these guns, which I'm sure they figured out real quick yeah. was a complete mistake. Come on, Nick, you are slowing down, know, on, the slowing down the production. on the production, exactly. <laughs> so here's the story. Nick comes to the Franke factory, and he slows production down so much that Franke goes out of business. We will put your name on it, so we are sure that yeah. uh, we, will, we will ship to you. We're sending this gun to quality control <laughs> exactly. right away, right? Okay. So is that right? There? I did it. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's actually really difficult. This guy makes it look easy, but there. You've been doing it a long time. Oh. The essence of the gun really hasn't changed that much through the years. Lock, stock, and barrel, they're all still here. And while the process of building them and the technology has definitely changed, gun making has always been an art. And even though this is an incredibly modern facility, it doesn't take long to see that the people who build guns here consider themselves craftsmen. Many of them can trace their gun making lineage in this region back hundreds of years, but me? I am no gunsmith, and they graciously let me continue to make an ass out of myself as I try my hand at piecing more parts together. And I gotta tell you, it was a lot of fun. But I'm also 100% sure that they threw this gun away when I left. Done. And that's a finished, finished Franke Affinity 3. Whoever buys this, you're welcome. Or maybe you're not. Maybe it won't work. I, I have a feeling the quality control guys will catch my problems, right? We put the, your, uh, your, your name also on this. You gonna put my name yeah. on this one? Twenty-four hours after my visit to the Franchi factory in Urbino, Italy, I find myself waking up in the small country town of Montefiore. Needless to say, I'm excited. It's my first morning hunting all year long, but it's also my first morning hunting in Italy. I'm in Italy hunting, drinking espresso with a bunch of hunters behind me that I don't have any idea what they're saying. Okay, dai ragazzi, pronti? Let's go. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> Italy has over 119,000 square miles inside its borders, and 116,000 of those are land. Today is our first day of hunting, and it's also my first chance to get a good look at the countryside that Italy is famous for. And I'll admit it, movies and magazines and pasta boxes have all given me a predisposed notion of what it's supposed to look like. And rarely does a place live up to those kinds of expectations, but in this case, Italy did not disappoint. I don't even know what to say right now. I feel like I'm about to hunt in the Godfather movie. I can see an old medieval church down there. This might be one of the most pretty spots I've ever seen. Today's hunting crew has three people. Bruno from Franke, Iris, who's from the Franke Food Academy, and Luca, who I'm told is one of the best bird hunters and dog handlers in these parts. I will admit that most of them look a lot sexier than me, but in the end, it's not about how you look, it's how you shoot, right? Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> My first Italian bird. Can you believe that? I am in Italy shooting birds, buddy. <laughs> Thank you for that. Good job, great job. Woo. At first I was representing the Americans pretty well, and then this happened. Oh. Funny how quickly it can go from 
feeling really good to feeling like an idiot. But I knocked the rust off and got it back together. Heck, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. <laughs> it didn't take long for Bruno to get on the board, too. Hello, boy. Hey. <laughs> the dogs were doing their job. Everybody was laughing and having fun. Lucas shot that one. Italy, I liked you before, but now... I think I just fell in love. Not bad for a first morning in Italy. <laughs> Look at this spot. Good people, good dogs. Good dogs. A little bit of Italian wild quail on the third shot. Anybody who says that auto loaders are for sissies is right. Because I'm not afraid to say that I appreciate that third shot a lot. <laughs> Look at that. Wild Italian quail. Exactly. After what? Nine shots. Nine probably. shots. <laughs> we, we've seen a lot of birds, but we're not shooting very well. No, no. Well, you aren't anyway. Here you go. Oh, okay, job, thank buddy. you. Yeah. Italians have always had a love affair with acacia, or as we call it, hunting. In the Middle Ages, the quarry of choice was mainly wild boar or deer. Hunting was obviously for meat, but it also had a fringe benefit. It was hard work back then, and it kept the men lean and mean fighting machines for war. It was also a social event, usually followed by a feast full of good Italian wine. Basically, it was a really good excuse to have a party. I guess some things never change. Today, the majority of Italian hunters are shotgun hunters, and the popular prey, wild boar, rabbit, and birds. <laughs> we definitely shot a lot of birds that morning, and we may have missed one or two or 10. Have you ever heard the old saying, a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush? Well, for me, here in Italy, I started to kind of find a new meaning for that saying, because it seemed like all of our shooting skills all of a sudden took a downward spiral, and we left a lot of birds in the bush. We, we are in conservation mode now. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> We're in conservation mode. We want, we want to scare the birds. We don't, want exactly. to, we don't want to kill any. Exactly. We just want to give them a really hard time. We want to make the birds late for something. <laughs> exactly, you know, to teach them. It's dangerous here. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous here. You know, yes. go somewhere else where you'll, you'll be safe. <laughs> okay. Actually, it's not that dangerous here. No, no, for them, no, 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 no <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> That's what makes uh, hunting, uh, let's say, something in common worldwide. <laughs> Everybody misses. Everybody. But there's another old saying that I've always liked. A good hunt is not measured in the number of kills. And it's starting to come to me what it means to bird hunt and just hunt in Italy. And the, the biggest thing that I'm learning is that it's, it's all about friends. It's all about dogs. It's all about the same stuff that it is at home. The language barrier is huge, but there are some things that are universal, and hunting is one of them, and I love it. And because of this thing we call hunting, you completely forget the fact that you're 5,000 miles away from home in a place that's completely unfamiliar, where people speak an entirely different language. But because of hunting, all that fades away, and all you're left with is the unique bond that only fresh air, a good dog, a bird on the wing, and a shotgun can give you. Sometimes it only takes one BB. That wasn't exactly a great shot, but this dog made it right for me. I've never shot anything like that. Look at that. 
The bird hunting in Italy has been incredible, but there's more to Italy than hunting. I'm talking about risotto, minestrone, pizza, calzone, lasagna, spaghetti, pepperoni, cheese, sauce, garlic. This is what most people think of when you hear the words Italian food. And to learn more about Italian cooking, my new hunting buddy Iris takes me to her childhood home, which is also a restaurant and home to the Franchi Food Academy. It's hard for me to believe that this is where you grew up. This house has got to be older than the U.S., <laughs> right? But for you, it's no big deal. This is No, for me, it's normal because I grew up here. And your parents run a restaurant here? Yeah. And for as long as you can remember, probably? Yeah, because uh, uh, they started uh, 30 years ago. So, so you grew up in, in the restaurant? Yeah. That's cool. Little Iris just running around. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so now you have a passion for cooking? Yeah. And cooking game food, right? Yeah. So you've helped create the Franchi Food Academy. Academy. And what's the idea behind that? It's game cooking, right? Yeah, because uh, Franchi Food Academy is a project to uh, promote the new way to cook the, the game food. Everybody knows that Italian cuisine is known all around the world for pasta, which comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes with all sorts of funny names. Italians like their authentic food with fresh ingredients and seasoned and spiced only a little bit. Today, Iris is going to show me a wild game take on an Italian staple. So what are we going to do today? Pasta, homemade pasta, gnocchi. Oh, and that's different than normal pasta, right? Yeah, because there, there, is a, there are potatoes inside. Potatoes, and normal yeah. pasta is made with just flour. And egg. That sounds great. Yeah. I love that. So what do we do first? We will uh, drink uh, a wine. First, we drink the wine, she says. I wonder if she knows that this is just like grilling at my house. Nothing goes on the grill without me having a beer first. I love this place. Gnocchi is actually a really simple recipe. First, you peel a boiled potato. And then you put it in a thing called a sketchup patata. No, really, that's what it's called. Then you squeeze the sketchup patata until you have shredded potato that looks like Play-Doh. Next, we made two piles and added flour to both piles. Iris cracked an egg and we split the egg between the two piles. And then we squished and mashed and rolled until, well, until Iris had to take over because I kept messing it up. Why don't I just drink some wine? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you go ahead. Once Iris got everything back on track, I joined back in and helped roll the dough. And then we slice up the dough into the small, soft little dumplings that are known as gnocchi. After that, we move inside, and I cut up the pheasant and the partridge from yesterday's hunt. We saute up a few vegetables, add some sauce, boil the gnocchi, and then we mix it all in a pan together. So do we stir it now? Is that what we do, or what? No, no. I have to do it in this. Oh, no. There is no way I'm going to be able to do that. So what do I... OK, do I just out and around? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I got it all over the burner. Hold on. Uh, uh, Hold on. Ma Mom? Most Italian women are taught by their mothers how to cook. Secret family recipes are passed down from generation to generation in the kitchen. In Italy, mothers are almost mythical creatures, women that you don't want to mess with. And Iris's mom is no different. She's ruled the roost in this kitchen for 30 plus years. And when we needed help, well, we called in the big gun. And that is how you do it. Leggermente in basso. Yeah. Leggermente in basso. No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> I'm going to let her do it. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And that's how you get schooled by an old Italian lady. <laughs> Just like that. Food, dogs, guns, birds, cooking, wine, more wine, and more wine, culture, history, and amazing people. Italy, I hope you enjoyed me. I love this place. As much as I enjoyed you. I can promise you I'll be back. So till we meet again. Mm, Is that pretty good? She's like, yeah, I'm awesome. Basically, is what it is. Arrivederci, Italia.